One of my snakes just laid a clutch of eggs. And this time it was from one of my ball pythons. When many people hear python, they automatically think giant snake. But actually there's about 40 different species of pythons and not all of them are enormous, including these guys who only grow to be about three to five feet long. I used a piece of soft charcoal to mark the eggs so I know which way is up during incubation. And then I transferred the eggs into my egg box. When the mother laid these eggs, they came out wet and then she coiled around them. And once they dried, some of them stuck together. I don't want to risk tearing the eggs by trying to separate them. So I'm going to leave them together naturally and just incubate them on this egg crate. I'm now candling the eggs to see if the eggs are fertile. If I see strong veins, it's a good egg. Overall, these eggs are looking really good. If you look closely, you could see that the eggs have some dimpling in them. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for it, but it's just portions of the egg that didn't calcify perfectly. And it shouldn't cause any issues with the eggs. I expect these babies to hatch in about 55 to 60 days. And I'm really excited to see them hatch because all of the babies are going to be clown combinations and the clown gene is one of my favorites. These ball python eggs are on day 15 of incubation. Let's check up on this them. This is the clutch that'll produce clown morphs. And clown combinations are some of my favorite ball python morphs. These eggs are about a quarter of the way through their incubation journey. It typically takes them about 55 to 60 days to hatch. This is the mother's second season breeding. At only five eggs, the clutch is a little small, but all of these eggs look great so far. I started marking my eggs with a piece of charcoal because when I cut one of the eggs open recently, I noticed that the marker that I was using was bleeding into the egg. Now I have been using marker for many years and as far as I know it never caused any issues. But there has been times where eggs went bad and I couldn't figure out why. But when you're working with life there are lots of different reasons why things don't work out. So honestly I can't definitively say whether the marker does or does not have a negative impact on the egg. But using the charcoal does give me peace of mind that it is more natural and it won't bleed into the egg. After candling these eggs everything inside looks great as well. But we still have about six weeks to go. I'm gonna get these eggs back in the incubator but we'll check up on them again soon. These ball python eggs are on day 23 of incubation. They're nearing the halfway point. Let's see how they're developed. The way that these eggs calcified makes them look a little bit more wrinkly looking. But in my experiences, that doesn't impact the health or the development of the egg at all. Out of the five eggs in this clutch, three of them are stuck together. People will often ask, why do the eggs stick together? When the eggs are laid, they're covered in a thin layer of a sticky liquid. The mother then wraps around the eggs to incubate. Them. And if she wraps up the eggs before they dry, the eggs will stick together. Scientists have a few ideas as to to why they may have evolved this way. It may be to prevent the eggs from rolling. Snake embryos will fix themselves to the inside of the egg shell. And they'll pretty much stay in that position throughout the entire incubation process. And rotating the egg out of position can cause the embryo to become detached and ultimately die. It may be to help prevent predators from coming up and snatching away a single egg. This species only lays eggs once a year, so it's important for the mother to protect as many as she can. And it's also possible that they stick together to retain heat to keep each other nice and warm during incubation. These ball python eggs are now on day 33 of incubation, so they're more than halfway done. This clutch will produce clown ball pythons, so let's take a look at the father and mother. The father is a clown, which is a recessive gene, so it takes two copies of that gene to make another clown. But we're in luck, because the mother is a pastel clown. So all of the snakes in this clutch are either going to be clowns or pastel clowns. This girl is usually much brighter, but you can see that she's in shed, so her colors are a little bit muted. I'll get her back into her enclosure so that she could shed in peace. These eggs are more than halfway done incubating and they're looking really good. They're still nice and plump and I don't see any signs of mold growing. At this point, I don't see any issues, but a lot could happen in the next 25 days. To help ensure that we continue to have no issues, I'm going to keep incubating them at 89 degrees Fahrenheit and keep the humidity high. I quickly candled the eggs and everything inside looks like it's developing normal. I could even see some movement. I'm really happy with the way this clutch is turning out. In about 25 days, we should see some new baby snakes. These ball python eggs are on day 58 of incubation. Which means they've gone full term, so the baby snakes inside are fully developed, so they should be hatching any time now. The eggshells are now very soft and very thin, which will allow the baby snakes to use their egg tooth to slice their way out of the egg. I noticed a little bit of mold or discoloration on this last egg. It doesn't look too bad, but with the unfortunate event that occurred in yesterday's video, I'm contemplating on cutting open the egg to check on the snake. Let's candle these eggs one more time to see if we notice any movement. Aside from the egg with those discolored spots, this clutch of eggs didn't give me any problems at all. And from what I could tell, these eggs look like they are exactly where they're supposed to be. They they should be hatching any time now. Based on the genetics of the parents, all of the snakes in this clutch should be clowns or clown combinations. And clowns are one of my favorite morphs, so I'm really excited to show you guys. We didn't notice much movement today, but everything looks as it should. I mentioned earlier that I'm considering cutting this clutch of eggs open based on yesterday's events. If the snakes don't hatch by day 60, I'll cut the eggs. 
These ball python eggs are on day 60 of incubation. And four out of the five eggs have already pipped. And I'm thrilled to see them pipping because after that last clutch of children's python eggs, I was a little bit nervous. Understandably, this little one is a little bit apprehensive, but it's definitely checking me out. And I noticed that this one already had its head out of the egg before I opened up the egg box. As predicted, all of these snakes carry the clown gene, which is a very distinctive pattern and one of my favorites. This little one is also watching me and I could tell already that it's going to be absolutely beautiful. There's still one egg in this clown clutch that hasn't pipped yet and because of what happened to that children's python clutch I'm going to cut this egg open to check on the snake. At this point the snake is fully developed so there's really no harm in opening up the egg a little bit to check on when it. When I cut into the egg you could see a little bit of red but that's just from the veins on the inside of the eggshell. It's not an injury to the snake. I was a little nervous because the snake wasn't moving much but then it responded to my touch. From what I could tell all of these snakes look healthy but we'll get a better idea once they all crawl out. I'm going to get them back in the incubator and we'll check up on them again tomorrow. Here's what I do after the baby snakes crawl out of their eggs. These baby ball pythons pipped one day ago and most of them are already out of their egg. After crawling out of their eggs, baby ball pythons will almost always lay on top of each other like this. As predicted, we got all clown morphs. This lighter color one is a pastel clown, just like the mother. And the darker color ones are single gene clowns, just like the father. Not only are all of these snakes absolutely beautiful, they also look big and healthy. So far, I'm really happy with how this clutch turned out. After removing the babies from the egg box, the next thing I need to do is clean them up. But before I do that, I need to remove all of these empty eggshells. Because if I don't, the leftover yolk inside will begin to stink and rot. The baby snakes absorb most of the yolk inside of the egg, which is always a good sign. But now I'm going to rinse off the baby snakes. I like to rinse off any substrate or any dried up yolk from the baby snakes. I do my best to get it all off. But if I miss any, the snakes will shed in about a week, so it should come off then. The next thing I'll do is put the babies on a damp paper towel. This will keep the humidity levels high as we wait for the babies to have their first shed. Now that it's out of the egg, let's clean up this little snake. Three days ago, this clutch of ball pythons hatched, and the last one finally crawled out of its egg. The morph of this little one is a pastel clown. So it's made up of two genes, the pastel gene and the clown gene. Now that it's out of the egg, I'm gonna clean this little one up and get it ready for its first shed. To do this, I'll set the water temperature to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or 29 degrees Celsius, and then thoroughly rinse off the snake. I'm also going to rinse out its egg because I'm going to use it in some artwork. Here you can see how soft and pliable a snake egg really is. I'm able to crush the eggshell into a tiny ball, but when I release it, it pops back up into its original form, and it's still capable of holding water. So in this clutch of eggs, we hatched a total of five beautiful and healthy ball pythons. As I mentioned, the one that just crawled out is a pastel clown, but we also hatched some single gene clowns as well. All of the lighter colored snakes are pastel clowns, and the darker colored ones are single gene clowns. Now that all of the snakes are out of their eggs, I'm going to leave them on this damp paper towel until they have their first shed. This is a baby ball python, and this is the egg that it hatched out of. This clutch hatched just a few days ago, and they're already getting ready to have their first shed. The snake's colors are dull right now, but at the same time, the snake's skin sort of has a shiny look to it, and their eyes are also cloudy. And what's causing that look is the snake's lymphatic system is releasing an oil that's separating the old skin from the new skin. And in about five days, the snake will break open the skin on its nose and crawl out of that old skin, revealing very bright and vibrant colors. In order to help them have the best shed possible, I'm going to keep them on a damp paper towel until they shed. And I'm really looking forward to it. Although they look beautiful now, wait until you see them after they shed. I love the contrast and colors on these pastel clowns. All of the snakes in this clutch contain the clown gene, but the lighter snakes in this clutch also contain the pastel gene, which pretty much acts as a color brightener. You can see that this little one's belly button is all healed up. In a few days, these snakes will shed, and then I'll separate them into their own enclosures and offer them their first meal. About one week ago, these baby snakes hatched out of their eggs. And now they just had their first shed. Wait till you see how pretty they are. The first is a pastel clown. I love the pattern on this one, and look at that crazy head stamp. This little one is a single gene clown, and right away you could tell the difference between the pastel clown and the clown just by itself. You could see that when you add pastel to the clown gene, the snake gets much brighter. The clown gene by itself has a dark head stamp and a very dark dorsal stripe. And in my opinion, it's just as pretty as the pastel clown. But when you add pastel, it brightens everything up, even the snake's eyes, which makes for a real attention getter. 